It's one more black mark, and certainly no tech company is going to settle in Idaho because they all offer same-sex be partner benefits. They have seen that retaining bright people and making them feel valued and welcome is critical to doing good business, and Idaho is doing a very poor job of doing business. Well, in addition to that, um, it kind of makes me, I have considered in the last six months leaving Idaho and just popping over to Pullman, well, actually, if I was going to live in Washington, in Seattle. But I don't feel like my tax dollars are being spent well. So even as a you know, heterosexual person in this state, it makes my stomach sick, and I'm not proud of this state, and I've been here for 16 years on and off. And I don't want to stay and give a state my money through my taxes that aren't going to support the equality of everybody. And so it's not just, you know, well, anybody, I guess, that maybe has a conscience. Um, I, I just think that's another, that's, that's the way I feel. Like, I don't want to stay here. I want to stay here and be proud. It's the most beautiful state I've ever encountered. But it's also one of the ugliest states I've ever encountered through its policies. It's physically pleasing and beautiful, and this is an amazing community that we live in. And I would hate to uproot my children and move out of here because I feel like I don't want to spend my money paying taxes in a state that doesn't value everybody. And I, got no, I have no problem heading west. It's also recognize on a state level the problems we have with bullying. My husband reminded me, well, having our state level set an example like this filters down to the schools, to the way children will treat each other. If it's okay for the state and it becomes legal to discriminate, what does that tell our children that we think? It's, you know, they always say, well, it's not what you tell them, it's what you do. Well. What we do. You know, it's particularly painful for me because my great grandparents homesteaded here. Um, you know, the lovely plaque on the 1912 building, they are farmers who contributed to that school. And yet, while my grandmother was in the one, one room schoolhouse during the First World War, she was tied to a tree and called the dirty little hessian because they were German immigrants. So. There will always be an ugly side to human behavior, and I, I would probably be better off financially and emotionally leaving, but I don't want to leave. I'm going to win. I'm not going to go to Washington and get married. I'm going to get married in Laytop County, I know. <laughs> I was just going to say that uh, in addition to contacting your own representatives and stuff, I mean, nothing nothing says you can't write letters to Luker or drop him something in the mail. Tell him what you think. Are there any other communities in Idaho that have had board meetings? Yes. Um, Sandpoint, Boise. Pocatello, Idaho Falls, and I believe Kettle. And Cortland. And now, but now the state legislature wants to try to undo that. And of course, that's 
the increased load of control until it's somewhere down the line. <laughs> Moscow wanted to be first, but we got the others did it so quickly we ended up more. <laughs> we had it in the works, but suddenly the other three beat us to it. So. I just want to point out, I heard uh, a let letters be written to the state. I, I would welcome uh, letters or emails could also be written to city council members of Moscow, uh, either specifically to this ordinance uh, or how it relates to the most state action. We would Just a suggestion, since there's so many people asking, what can I do, where can I write, all that, maybe there could be an effort to centralize some information and make that very easy for people. I don't know if there's a location, a website that works for that, but just connections, contacts. We can, we can, we can work on that. We can put it on the Latex County Task Force website. Everything is there already. Which is on the Facebook page. Okay. Yeah, I know that Inland Oasis has already posted the links to contact legislators on their Facebook page. Okay. And I believe it's on their website as well. Okay. Or if you're a fan of Tabby Cat Drag Show Productions, we've already looked at there too. <laughs> Same with <price. laughs> Yes. This, this is just... Um, Personal experience. My, I, my son recently married his partner, uh, his male partner, and I was just down south seeing a lot of relatives who, because of part of the culture in which they live and the religious backgrounds they have, seem to be pretty significantly um, uh, homophobic. And yet, knowing that they're going to see Luke. They were just so excited to meet Luke and his partner, and, I, and it's and it's just a, stra a strange experience when people, once they know a person as a human being, they no longer are afraid of the person and the things that they're normally afraid of. The boogeyman kind of just disappears, and I and just knowing that is just the smallest glimmer of hope, um, and I don't know how. I mean, I think that there are ways in which we can get to know each other, especially in a, in a town like Moscow, so that the, the fear that creates that kind of division and that kind of anxiety can dissipate too. I think that's a good point because I think that when um, folks take up these kind of measures, the effort really is to push us all back in. Have us be quiet, have us disappear, and, and the thing about gay folks is we're not like one color or anything like that. So we can, you know, sort of pass. But um, I, think, I think it's a good reminder that the, whoever feels like they can come out and be out and let folks know, um, that's, that's a good thing. I mean, obviously a lot of folks don't feel safe doing that still. But but if you can. Well, it would be very brief. Uh, just civil rights laws are enacted to remedy arbitrary discrimination that is based on specific characteristics. It's basically society trying to do the, uh, the right to civil law. Um, well, I guess I'll pray if that's okay. <laughs> And just pray that that everybody who is afraid, everybody who is unfamiliar, everybody who's trapped by old teachings that don't make sense and um, separate, create artificial separations between people, that that folks can just find it in their hearts to burn down the barriers and embrace one another and embrace justice and equality for everyone. like that phrase, artificial barriers. We are all human. We all suffer. We all feel joy. We all have those common human experiences. 
and if we can step outside of our dogma and actually remind people that doing the right thing is also a good business choice. Vote, keep pushing, and for those of you who've lived here forever and know Lila Carson, she's planning on getting arrested in Boise, so. <laughs> she taught kindergarten and preschool here for 30 some years. And she was my first teacher when I was four years old. And she just called me the other day to say she's, she's gonna be at the Capitol building the next time they get arrested. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you to the panelists. be very brief. Um, just civil rights laws are enacted to remedy arbitrary discrimination that is based on specific characteristics. It's basically society trying to do the, uh, the right to be civil law. Um, well, I guess I'll pray if that's okay. <laughs> and just pray that, that everybody who is afraid <coughs> everybody who is unfamiliar, everybody who's trapped by old teachings that don't make sense and um, separate, create artificial separations between people, that, that folks can just find it in their hearts to bring down the barriers and embrace one another and embrace justice and equality for everyone. like that phrase artificial barriers we are all human we all suffer we all feel joy we all have those common human experiences and if we can step outside of our dogma and actually remind people that doing the right thing is also a good business choice vote keep pushing and for those of you who've lived here forever and know Lila Carson, she's planning on getting arrested in Boise, so. <laughs> she taught kindergarten and preschool here for 30 some years. And she was my first teacher when I was four years old. And she just called me the other day to say she's, she's gonna be at the Capitol building the next time they get arrested. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you to the panelists.